You know, I'm normally a pretty gentle sort of a guy. Wouldn't hurt a fly, but there's just one thing, one little thing that really bugs me. It's Senocephalides felis, the dreaded flea. And that's an F word no one wants to hear, especially if you're a pet owner. So how to get on top of these rotten little critters? Well, you have to get down and dirty. And go right down here. Yeah, keep on coming. Further, further, right down here where they breed. Warm weather is great for enjoying more time with our pets. Unfortunately, it's also when fleas thrive. Okay, hot weather. You can be guaranteed there are millions upon millions of fleas everywhere. But the big question is, has your little mate been besieged by these little bloodsuckers? Well, there's a simple test I can show you. The first thing you'll need is a piece of wet A4 paper. Now take that, put it next to the rump of your dog. The fleas love this area. They seem to be a lot further away from the body end, which is their preferred spot. So, get the rump area and rub your fingers through the coat like that. It'll flick up all sorts of pieces of dirt and debris that's sitting in their fur. Now amongst this debris could very well be flea dirt, which is basically flea poo. In the flea poo is blood, and if there is blood, it'll run red across the paper. So I'm sorry to say, Neelix, the paper doesn't lie. You have got fleas. I'm sorry. Once you find fleas, it's important to remember killing them is only the start. It's essential to break the breeding cycle by hitting all their secret hideouts around your home. For starters, fleas love carpet, almost as much as they love pets. Vacuuming is a chemical-free solution that will suck up thousands of flea eggs, larva and pupae. Pet beds, rugs, doormats and furniture covers are all potential breeding grounds. So wash all these items and dry them outside in the sun. A few years ago, flea treatments centred around these, the trusty old flea collar. And look, whilst they do work, there is new technology and a new way of managing fleas. And it's these top spots. Small amount of liquid goes on the back of the neck. That liquid then sinks into the oils of the skin, spreads its way around the whole body. And each time a flea hops on or bites, it gets a lethal dose of that drug, but importantly, it's safe to our little mate here. Remember, fleas are minuscule, but they're armour-plated little suckers, so you have to be vigilant to get rid of them for good. And here's a bit of trivia. They can jump 100 times their own height. That's the equivalent of a human jumping over the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And one last thing, never ever use dog flea treatments on cats. You see there's a chemical in dog flea treatments which is incredibly toxic to our little feline friends. So give them their own and you'll have no problems. Good luck. Oh, Cody, it's awful. Yep, flatulence. It's a fact of life if you own a dog, but some dogs can be more on the nose than others. So here are some tips. Firstly, diet. Check their dry food contains mostly meat protein and not the vegetable kind. Now, vegetable protein is a lot harder to digest, meaning your dog's going to produce a lot more gas. Also, don't let them overeat or change their diet suddenly. This will only increase the problem. Exercise is also helpful because it gets everything moving and keeps the smells outside instead of inside. And if all else fails, then these could be a very handy last resort. And of course, a full vet check will ensure that the problem isn't something as sinister as that smell. Oh, Cody, awful. Now let's get down to basics. When you've got four legs instead of two and you spend your whole life this close to the ground, then chances are you're gonna pick up a couple of little nasties. So where should you look? Well, you should focus your attention between these toes inside these ears, under the collar, and around the face. The fact is that 80% of ticks will attach from the front legs forward. They really like it up here, because down the back, they run the risk of being chewed out by these chompers up here. So this is what it's gonna look like. In, usually in the same grain as the hair. 
in there around the neck. Now, the temptation is just to reach in and grab it, but the thing is it's attached by a very narrow little proboscis, which anchors it very firmly into the dog. So instead of doing that, get some tweezers, go right around the base of it, where it is joined into your dog, and that's its head. Instead of just pulling it straight out, actually twist it. And by twisting it, you actually release all those little spikes for sticking into your dog. That'll enable you to remove the tick and not leave any behind. So whilst your dog might go through a few seconds of discomfort, it is going to be worth it in the long run. There you go, girl. Got rid of that nasty little hitchhiker, didn't we? Yes. Just imagine the food bill for these two big girls. They're Great Danes, Shah and Lily. And they might look happy enough, but Shah's suffering. We think she's pulled a crucial ligament and she's limping. She's been holding it for about four days. And we're just going to throw her in the car and take her over to the specialist and have it checked out. Owner Joe knows the procedure all too well. You see, Shah has done this before on her other leg. But being new to Melbourne, Joe is a little anxious putting her three year old baby in the care of total strangers. How's she been since the injury? She's a little sore, a little nervous about the whole thing. And how about you? Are you nervous? I'm probably just as nervous as her. Yeah. Come on down. I'm sure everything's going to be fine. The big girl got herself into big trouble, huh? Yeah. Joe has nothing to worry about because here at the Southern Animal Referral and Emergency Centre, they deal with injured animals every day. She's not and when it high comes high to high animal high surgeons, high Dr Charles Kunz is one of the best. You can definitely see as she comes back that her right hip is moving up and down with each step. Tearing a cruciate ligament means putting any weight on the leg is extremely painful. Surgery is the only option. Okay, so this is Shah's thigh bone and this is a shin bone. The problem is that the shin bone is tilted backward, so it's like, so the thigh bone tries to roll down the hill almost like a ball on a slope. What we're going to do is cut the tibia and correct that angle so there isn't the stress on the ligament in anymore. All right. All right you ready to go, baby? Another kiss? Yes. It's time for Joe to leave her beloved Shah in the hands of the experts. Saying goodbye is never easy. This way. Uh, it does worry me because you never know with surgery, but he seems confident and there's really nothing else I can do. I can't let it go without it. So we just will have to go with it. This stage is just as important as the operation itself. All areas must be totally clean so the chance of infection is minimised. We've given uh, a, a shot of antibiotics, uh, uh, shaved him, prepped him, We've given an epidural for pain relief. Give us about 24 hours of pain relief. After 45 minutes of prep, it's time to make the first incision. Dr Charles isn't worried. He's done this same operation before 500 times. It's probably no great surprise they do these sort of injuries, really, is it? Because Great Danes can be almost human in size, but this knee is, is quite narrow. It's, yeah, it's quite small, and also you have that, that slope tilting backwards, so it's every step it takes its whole life, it's putting stress on that cruciate ligament. Yeah. You know, the weekend warrior dogs, they sit on the sofa all week, and then on the weekends, the owner take them to, takes them to the beach. He runs for a couple of hours chasing a ball and comes up lame, and then yeah. they rest through the week, and by the next weekend, they're sound again. <laughs> and then the next Saturday comes, and they take them back to the beach, and they yeah. start limping again. So they're like, oh, this is how it's supposed to feel. Because these guys really do recover. Hey, look, everything went really well. The cruciate ligament was completely torn. The meniscus was intact, so we didn't have to touch that. Uh, the surgery went perfectly. The plate's in place really nicely. We're on our way to post-op x-rays to make sure everything looks good, and then she'll be on her way to recovery. So, Doc, that seemed to go pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it went really well. The screw holes are exactly where we expect. Nothing's going into the joint up here, so it's just as, uh, as we would have hoped. So how long do you expect before Shah is, is back to, to running around and, and being a normal great day? She'll be weight-bearing tomorrow on that leg, and by about two weeks she'll be pretty good. Hopefully by eight weeks when she comes back for her x-ray, um, she'll be uh, as good as new. And look at this. Only one month after her operation, Shah is back to being her cheeky self and giving owner Joe a run for her money. But of course, Joe wouldn't have it any other way.